Hey everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today we're canning some homemade mustard. We are gonna do a grainy beer mustard. So yummy. On top of that, we're gonna put a little spin on it by adding a little bit of spice. So good, you're gonna love this one. Let me show you how I make it. When you go to make this mustard, you are going to do this 24 hours in advance. The mustard seeds need to sit and soak for 24 hours. In here, I'm and I'm just gonna do this in a regular jar, um, a quart jar. So I have one beer in here and I'm using Kilt Lifter, cause I like it. <laughs> you can use whatever kind of beer you like, but I'm using Kilt Lifter in here. Um, it's, it equals out to about one and a half cups, but it's a 12 ounce bottle. I also have one cup of water. Let me put that in. And then I'm gonna use a half a cup of brown mustard seed and a half a cup of yellow mustard seed. And I think I'm gonna put a little thing in here. So there's my brown mustard seeds. and yellow. Okay. If you have a hard time finding mustard seeds, um, Amazon. Amazon's a great place to get them. Um, I'm using Anthony's uh, br organic brown mustard seeds. And I couldn't, they didn't have um, the organic yellow. So I just got some from San Antonio, but I got these off Amazon. I will find them and put a link in the description box below for you. I'm just gonna stir these up. I'm gonna cover this with a plastic cap and I'm just covering it loosely cause I have beer in here. So I'm not gonna screw it down all the way in these. Um, white caps are not airtight anyway so there you go i'm just gonna leave this set on my countertop leave that there for the day tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and put that through the blender all right it is the next day and this is what our seeds look like they're all plumped up nice i'm gonna go ahead and put pour this after i smell it Ooh, it smells good into my food processor this is gonna break some of the seeds up, but it's not gonna break all of the seeds up. So in case you were worried that every seed would be busted up, it should not be. Okay. Put those in the sink. After that, I'm gonna put in a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. I am also gonna add a fourth a cup of Coleman's mustard. Whoa, and spill it all over just because it's me. It's how I do things. Let me get a spoon. Actually, I got a measuring spoon. Is my quarter cup of ground mustard. I hope the dogs like mustard. <laughs> the next thing I'm putting in is two thirds cup of brown sugar. Yes, 1970s Tupperware brown sugar container. Uh huh, uh huh. Still in use. I'm just gonna lightly pack it. Brown sugar. I am gonna be adding a half a teaspoon of turmeric. This is gonna be adding some depth of flavor. Also, clove. Sounds funny, but it's so good in this. And I'm gonna be using an eighth of a teaspoon, just a tiny bit, 
So you're just gonna get that hint, but it works well with the turmeric. I'm gonna start out with one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. I don't want it to be too salty. And then onion powder. Another strange thing you wouldn't think, but it works. I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of onion powder. All right, I'm gonna put the lid on and give it a whirl. All right, I'm gonna pour this right in the pan. All right, I'm gonna pour this in my pan. And I'm not using a huge pan for this. Small batch cannon. I'm gonna turn the heat on. I wanna bring this to a boil. After it comes to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on it and I'm gonna turn it down to simmer and simmer it for 10 minutes. And then we're gonna check the thickness and we're gonna check for salt at that point. So when I'm there, I'll be back. And by the way, I got my tiny little canning pot, so cute. <laughs> I've got four ounce jars in there. Okay, hopefully you can see. I'm gonna turn my mustard off. It smells so delicious. It has thickened up nicely. And as you can tell, and when it's in the jars, it's going to thicken up a little more after canning because these are going to continue to swell a little bit. So you don't want it too thick. Set up like cement. And also I want to add a note because I forgot to tell you, you need to stir through your um, bringing to a boil and simmering 10 minutes. The seeds will stick. All right, I am ready. While that was going, I made sure I got everything into place and I just spooned hot water over my lids because I will be processing these guys only 15 minutes. I know I don't have to, but um, you know, I still do. <laughs> you all probably do too. All right, we're gonna get these little guys full. And these only need to, these only need a quarter inch head space. Sorry, I can't talk and do two things at once, I guess. And I feel like I'm canning in the dark. <laughs> I have uh, turned off all the lights so it won't be too bright for you. I only have a couple of kitchen lights on. <laughs> Feels weird. Hanging in the dark. All right, I'm gonna debubble this guy. I think I could probably get just a smidgen more in because I need a, only a quarter inch headspace. That's good. And I am wiping the rims with water only. If you want to use white vinegar, you certainly can. I've got nothing that is a fat in here, so I'm not wasting my white vinegar. Okay, that's ha ha. Why am I surprised every time, you ask? I don't know. I never learn. It only needs to be fingertip tight, but there again, you gotta be able to get your fingertips on them.
Canning your own condiments is a great idea. That way you can put your own spin on them. Put flavors that you like in them. In FYI, I should also tell you that this is not an approved canning recipe, which means I did not get it from Ball. I did not get it from the USDA Home Canning Preservation. You know, I always forget the title. Um, this is something that I looked at Ball's recipe and made, made it my way. So there you go. So if you are not comfortable with Rebel Canning, um, you know, you can make this and just put it in the refrigerator. You can make half a batch and keep it refrigerated. You don't have to can it. I, um, I am okay with it because it does have vinegar, it does have sugar, it has salt. Which salt's more for flavor, not really for preserving, but it's got the vinegar and sugar. Trying to get little jars out. I'm gonna have to switch. <laughs> trying to get little tiny jars out of that with this big clunky thing. Doesn't always work, I'll tell you. These work better. <laughs> And I have pulled myself out a half pint so that I may put this in the fridge with whatever's left after canning the jars that I've put in here. I will make sure that I put this recipe up on my blog. So if you are interested in it, I will put the full recipe up there. But I am keeping some out for the refrigerator. And then it is a good idea to wait about two weeks till opening this, just so the flavors mellow, get incorporated. Um, if you've ever canned mustard before, mustard seeds are a little spicy, especially the brown ones. So if you want them to get a little bit more mellow before you eat this, and this is by no means a spicy mustard. It is actually a really mellow, more sweet, you can taste the beer, it's delicious. It's a really mild mustard. The next mustards we make probably are not going to be so mild. <laughs> I want to make a spicy mustard and I definitely want to make, um, I want to make a hot sweet mustard. There is this place downtown Phoenix that I absolutely love. It's called Duck and Decanter. And when you order their charcuterie boards or even a cheese assortment, um, they put a couple different kinds of mustards, and my favorite is their hot sweet mustard. It is so good. So if I can come up with a recipe like that, I will be thrilled. So I am going to start testing it ASAP. <laughs> While I'm in a mustard making mood here, why did I pick that up? Have it. And then I'm gonna have to make a video about making homemade pretzels or pretzel bites or something. So maybe I'll do that in two weeks when this is ready. We'll do a pretzel bite and tasting with the fam. We'll do a pretzel, pretzel bite recipe and then we can do a tasting of this with the fam. So I will put that on my calendar for two weeks.
I don't think I'm gonna have enough to put in my little, I'll have to just keep one jar out. Okay, so if I scrape it out of that pot, I got just enough to keep in my fridge for the tasting. That way it's like, you know, not wasting your lids to crack one open right away, even though I do that half the time. All those cute little guys are in the hot tub. I'm going to process these guys for 15 minutes. And we're water bath canning. Did I say in the beginning that we're water bath canning? Mustard needs only water bath canning unless you are making it full of peppers. There's some of them that are hot that are full of banana peppers and different kind of peppers. Those we might need to um, pressure can, but these regular mustards, you can just water bath can them. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, these guys are done. I'm going to pull them out. Not tilting them so that, you know, the water will stick on the top a little bit, but that's okay. It will dry up. Right away. And there they are. A gorgeous dark grainy mustard, but very mild. That is all there is to the spicy grainy beer mustard. It's super easy to make and well worth it. I like to do mine in the four ounce jars. Oh, I love this with pretzels. Such a good appetizer. Or just on your rye bread with some Hard-boiled eggs, great way to use up Easter eggs. Um, some lunch meats, some cheeses, definitely yummy. And if you wanted to put a little bit of cayenne in there and give it a little bit more of a kick, that would be awesome. I probably would be tempted to do something like that myself. <laughs> there are a couple more mustards that I like to get canned up, so I'm probably gonna bring it along for those mustards too. I love mustard and I'm dying to get some more on my shelf. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like these kind of canning videos and you like homemade foods and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. On this channel, I make a lot of homemade foods, I can a lot of things, and I show how I use a lot of my canned goods. So if that interests you, stick around, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.